I've been observing my students throwing and am very impressed with what they're doing and with what my instructors have been doing and the way their decorations add value to their pots. I've covered those techniques in another video. In this video, I want to talk about throwing and offer some things to you which I think might help you. Uh, throwing is only one part of making pottery, but if you're going to do wheel thrown pottery, it's an important part. This video isn't so much about making a particular vase, it's more about thinking like a potter, about the mental process behind what you do that will enable you to grow. So first of all, I'm taking this clay and sticking it down with a little water and I'm going to slap it down fairly hard and then, very important, I'm going to pat this thing into the center and make sure it's stuck on and rounded on top. So this really makes centering a lot easier because I'm halfway there. When I cone, I use the heel of my left hand and I push away from myself and I try to avoid a volcano on top and then I bend the top over and press down on the top to make it go back down. Opening is done in one move with my left thumb where I go down to the bottom and then come out to make the floor. Then I go over the floor and compress it. Back in and compress. Now I'm ready to start pulling up. First, I cone in a little bit to slope the sides. Then I squeeze between my left thumb and finger, lubricating with the sponge on the right, and bring it up. When I run out of water, I pause momentarily, get some more water, and continue. Then I compress the lip a little bit to round it and thicken it. Now I'm ready for my second pull. I have to make sure it's lubricated, and I'm squeezing quite hard at the bottom and making the wall get thinner. After I thin the wall at the bottom, I push out with my inside hand and in with my outside hand, making this bulge, which then rides up the pot with my inside fingers being slightly above my outside fingers. And I'm continuing to stretch the clay as I go up. This is different than a compression pull. This is a stretching pull when you see that bulge. I always lubricate and make sure that it's nice and slippery. Otherwise, I'm going to twist this pot off and it's just going to break. So once it's well lubricated, I repeat the process. Now I'm not pushing in so much with the outside hand because the diameter of the base is pretty good, but I am pushing out with the inside hand and coming up to make a straight cylinder and I'm going for height at this point. Height and uniform wall thicknesses. Now I'm lubricating again, it has to be nice and slippery and I'm lubricating the inside as well. I keep a sponge in my left hand when I throw as well as my right. Now, uh, working on the wall thickness at the bottom, checking it out, making sure I've got a nice edge. Now I've got a rib in my right hand and I'm ready to shape. So with the tip of the rib on the wheel head and the rib stationary, but tipped out somewhat, I push the wall of the pot out to meet the rib. And when I reach the top of the rib, then my left hand and right hand move simultaneously and the, the edge there of the dry and wet clay is up near the top of the ridge. Now I'm rolling the rib in a little bit to make that base shape. Wiping the extra clay off, the outside of the pot is very dry now because I ribbed off all the moisture and I have to lubricate again. Okay, here goes the next pole. It's exactly like the first pole with the rib the shaping pole, except I'm 
flaring it out more. And you can see that the lower portion is totally dry and the upper portion is nice and wet. So now I have the basic shape that I want. This is uh, this base is part of a series I've been working on for the last few days, so there's no hesitation. I'm making the foot, and then I'm going to put a spiral down near the bottom using the rib. Uh, so you can see I've cut under with the rib to define the foot. Now here goes a little spiral that's going to slide up from the foot. And later I'm going to put some accent marks on the foot when it's leather hard. Okay, now I'm just making sure that the line flows from the foot to the neck nice and smoothly and adding a little more dramatic flair to the shoulder. Now I'm going to work on the neck. So everything up to the neck is done. I'm going to use a small yellow rib, I think, or maybe not, I don't know, uh, to shape the lip and flare it out. Let's see if I grab a rib. I'm looking for a nice flow in the shape where the belly comes and shoulder comes into the neck. And then curves out nicely from the neck to the lip. So this is a kind of a critical stage where you know, you, you need to really make your curves flow. Okay, here's my little yellow rib. And I'm working on that transition right on the neck where it goes in and back out to the lip. If the camera was a little, a little bit lower, you'd be able to see the curve better. Now the inside is very wet because I haven't dried the inside out, so it's going to take uh, a couple of sponges to to get all that water out of there. Um, so I'm squeezing and rinsing the sponge. I've got that yellow ribbon in my hand. Okay, now I'm using the edge of the yellow rib to put in that, this spiral. I could also use my finger, but when I do, it's a little sharper. Okay, so the spiral that I just added when I pushed out from the inside uh, is kind of the reverse, a little spiral on the bottom, which is cut into the pot uh, using the sharp edge of the ridge. And now I'm softening up the line of the lip. And this flaring really, really, really helps. It just absolutely softens uh, and makes this lip much more fluid. OK, so this is done, except for two little marks. I'm putting one on the other side spinning around and then you can see it and I'm done with a pinch. So I'm poking out with my finger on the inside and pinching around my finger, kind of like you do on a pie crust. And that mark is going to correspond to some marks I put down at the foot, which um, are just going to reflect something about the softness of the clay. I want to give you some insight into my thought process and also give you some pro tips that will help you become a better thrower. This is a still of the finished pot and you can see the little dimples on the bottom that correspond to the dimples at the transition between the shoulder and the neck and also the spiral at the base that relates to the spiral where I pushed out going up the pot. The three pots in the middle here are an exploration of fluidness of form 
with some slight alterations relating to the softness of clay. The second one from the left has a slightly wiggle, wiggly lip, and on most of these pots, I'm exaggerating the lip. The two on the outside are exploring the softness of the clay with some additional bulging of throwing lines. These pieces explore the cylinder and the softness of clay and also an exaggerated lip which is soft and a soft exaggerated foot. This is an example of an exploration of flowing lines but also the softness of the form because I squished the pot a little bit making it elliptical. This set is a pretty serious exploration of the softness of clay uh, and really experimenting with form. This is a two-part pot where I'm throwing the base and then adding a cylindrical neck and doing a lot of alteration. Here I'm exploring a more classical shape. Uh, this is like the pot in the demonstration, the, in the throwing demonstration. And I, I think I've explained this one pretty good already. I find evaluating my work with side lighting and in the bisque state or greenware state where there's no glaze on it gives me an opportunity to really study the form and appreciate it and to plan my next sequence of pots. Our studio is called Fireborn because in the firing process all those aspects of the form, the softness and the hardness come together with the glaze and create a unified whole so the pot is really born in that firing. It helps to think of your pots in anatomical parts so they have a foot, a belly, a shoulder, a neck, and a lip. And it also helps to try to connect those parts with flowing lines. After throwing, and then again next week after trimming, evaluate your work carefully, line them all up, be critical, and start again. Make another set using the first set as a takeoff point and try to improve everything that you see. Good hand position and body mechanics enable me to throw quickly and efficiently, efficiently without much stress and use of strength. During the design phase, I think about how I want to glaze these pieces. And that's difficult for beginners because you don't know what the options are. But when you get to the point where you can think ahead, it really helps. When I throw, I'm very careful about how much water I use. Early on, lots of water is fine. But later on, you want to rib as much water off as you can so your pot doesn't get soggy. If you have to go back and work on the lip and it's dry and it's thin, you're going to have to wet that part while you work on it and then dry it off again. I hope this video helps you to become a more efficient potter and make whatever your idea is come to fruition on the wheel.